Yo, today we're gonna learn how to play the Italian opening in a more exciting way. So if you play the Italian opening, you have probably reached positions like this, let's say bishop c5, c3, this is the main line, and then they play d6, you play castle, they play castles, you play h3, h6, rook e1, rook e8, knight bd2, and so on. So it's just boring, like kind of copycat variation. So this is what a typical Italian game looks like but you can make it way more exciting if you play for example d4 here in this position now let's talk about why we don't see these games at the top level between 2700 rated grandmasters well we actually do but it's less common than d3 and the reason is because the, the top grandmasters, so for example Magnus Carlsen, Hikaru and so on, they know all the theory. And if you play this line and black knows like 20 moves of theory, they will get a kind of equalish position where you cannot really press for the win or grind out the win um, as they could in D3 lines. So this is the reason why we don't see D4 as much in the top level as D3. Uh, but like under 2500 uh, rating, this is in my opinion the best option because even if they know all of the theory, they're still not gonna get a forced draw or like a position that's completely simplified. Uh, there are still gonna be a lot of pieces on the board, so you can still try for the win. Um, so that's why, in my opinion, d4 is the best and we're gonna look at it. Now let's look at another popular line. If they play knight f6 here, the, most, uh, the main line, the most popular move is d3, which in my opinion is just a blunder. Because again, you blunder the exciting game uh, by not playing knight b5. And you're just gonna get a boring Italian again. Uh, so that's why here you're gonna play knight to b5, which is called the knight attack. And the point is, you're just attacking this pawn. Because uh, this is also one of the main ideas in the Italian. You're placing the bishop on c4 to pressure the f7 pawn, which is only defended by the king. Uh, so this is like one of the main ideas in the Italian. Uh, also, this is the, the e pawn makes the Italian opening effective because black pushed the pawn to e5. So for example, if they play the Sicilian, let's say this position and you play c4, bishop c4, this is not the Italian opening because black didn't play e5 and played c5 instead. Now what's the difference? The difference is the pawn can now go to e6 and block the bishop. So now the opening is basically ineffective because the bishop is blocked so you don't have this main idea anymore so that's why Italian opening it cannot be played against anything so the only because I see a lot of beginners they just play this setup so knight f3 bishop c4 and they call it the Italian opening so that's not the Italian opening the Italian opening is only if black plays e5 and knight to c6 and the chance of this happening is about one in four games uh, so the chance of black playing e5 and then following up by knight to c6. Uh, obviously at the lower level you're gonna get these, these responses more often because at the higher level opponents are gonna be more likely to play something else. So for example the Karakon, the Scandinavian, Sicilian, like all of the other openings. Um, so exactly this position is the Italian opening.
Now let's talk about all of the lines that I'm going to be covering in the following videos. Because uh, obviously this is an introduction video. Because uh, I don't want to make one video which is three hours long. I'm going to rather make like 10 videos for 20 minutes each. Um, so yeah, let's look at the lines. The most popular move is and the best move is bishop to c5. Um, here we're going to look at c3, which is the best response. And then black has two moves. Uh, first one, knight f6, the most popular and again the best move. And here we're going to obviously play d4 and not d3. Uh, now another thing that I forgot to mention, in these uh, d4 lines and all of the lines that I'm going to show, you're going to have to learn theory. It's not like you can just make moves just because you feel like it and because you think it's a good move, you have to actually know the lines. Because in d3 positions, here it doesn't matter if you play h3, if you castle, if you develop the knight, but let's say in this position, d4, if they take, you have to know what you're doing. So for example, here you can play e5, which we're gonna look at, this is the, the best move. You can also take anything else is basically losing. So that's why you have to know your lines. So in this position, we set knight f6, we go d4, uh, and then the, the second move is d6. Here we again go d4. Um, you're gonna see that almost always you, you go for d4. Um, now let's go back. So bishop c5. So c3 is the, the best move, but now we're going to also look at b4, which is the Evans Gambit. And uh, just yesterday I discovered something really cool, which is d4 in this position. It's called the Italian Gambit and it's actually really tricky. So we're going to look at all of the lines here. Um, so this covers the bishop c5 move. Now the, the second most popular move is knight to f6. Knight to f6, we're gonna play knight b5, the knight attack, and we're attacking this pawn. Now the main line is d5, where you take, and then again there is a crossroad. They can play the main line, the polario defense, which is knight a5, where you play bishop check, and then again there is a crossroad. They can play the main line c6, where you take, but there is also this move, where you play queen e2. Um, and then let's go back. Now here we also have knight takes uh, this pawn, and here we go for the fried liver with knight takes. By the way, the, the best move actually here, or like it's equally good, is d4. So not even the, the fried liver attack, but the d, uh, d4 is like the best move objectively by, objectively by the engine. Uh, so we're going to briefly also look at this option. Um, now in this position, there is also knight to d4, where you play c3 and then they can play b5 you play bishop f1, so this is a transposition, they can also play b5 here, and then you play bishop f1, and then they play knight d4, uh, so we're gonna look at all of that. Now let's go back, if they do not play d5, they have two options, they can go for the Traxler counterattack, uh, which is bishop c5, and the point is knight takes, bishop takes, uh, and here, the, the best move, objectively, is bishop takes. But there is a third option that almost nobody talks about, which is d4. Again, d4. So d4 is always, almost always, the, the, the move that we're going to look at. Uh, d4 in this position. And the point is that you're just opening up the bishop 
So if they take with the bishop, now he can go for the normal fried lever attack, like the knight takes here. Uh, and the Traxler is just ineffective because the bishop is opened up, so it holds some squares. We're gonna look at, at the lines more deeply. Uh, but yeah, d5 is just a, a, a crazy move here. And it's not like it's uh, equalizing. If black knows everything, they are still down a pawn. Um, okay, now let's look at the last move, which is knight takes e4. Now this looks crazy, but actually Gotham Chess made a video on this move. Uh, I think it's called something like the... Is it the knight attack or... I don't know what the video is called. It was like one year ago and then everybody started playing this but this just loses if you know bishop takes uh pawn king obviously has to move no no other moves and then again d4 so we're gonna look at also these lines and this covers the knight f6 lines now we have five more options in this position we're gonna look at bishop e7 the hungarian defense and can you guess what you're gonna play here? d4, that's right. Um, then we also have d6, which is called the Paris defense, where we play d5, I mean d4. <laughs> um, we also have the h6, the anti-fried liver defense, where again you can play d4, uh, but I've analyzed castles, because it's just... Uh, simpler um, and then we also have f5 the Rousseau gambit where you again play d4 and then the last move which is knight to d4 the blackburn shilling gambit the point is if you take the pawn they have uh, queen g5 and it gets messy uh, so you you cannot take here you have to take the knight um, so yeah, these are all the lines that we're going to look at. So as you can see, the, the Italian opening is pretty extensive, like there are a lot of lines. Uh, but yeah, we're going to cover all of them and that's it for this introduction video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and see you next time.